Good afternoon. This is Professor Ken Top, and we're going to review basic static routes. You were uh, given an assignment where you were to configure a uh, setup like the one shown in the YouTube video with two routers, two switches, and two PCs to build some basic static routes. And uh, what you see here is the set of details that I'm going to use to demonstrate what we do in Packet Tracer, which is very much like the, it's a little less tedious than the, um, than the GSN3, but it's the same idea. So uh, inside Packet Tracer, what I've done already is taken the liberty to set up a couple of labels and the two routers, there's a router zero and router one, uh, switch uh, 2960 and switch 2960, and PC zero and PC one. And you'll notice that um, this is the subnet between the two routers, 10.10.9.0, and then this is the subnet on this side. So this PC is sitting on a 192.168.9.0, and much like the rest of the internet, uh, PCs elsewhere are sitting on a separate subnet. So here we have a second PC, PC1, and it's sitting on um, a 172.16.9.0 slash 24 uh, internal local network. And what we want to do is, is see how routes work the magic. So one of the things I'd like to do is make some initial connections. And routers are a little different than PCs or switches. Uh, we did take the liberty of configuring the Ethernet ports so that uh, the first Ethernet port, the gigabit Ethernet port 00, is sitting on 10.10.9.1. And over here, the first uh, gigabit Ethernet 0, uh, slash zero is sitting on 10.10.9.2. So that's over on, on this side. So dot one and dot two, and that's where the labels come in, right? So here's the network, and this is the interface IP address, dot one and dot two. 10.10.9.1, 10.10.9.2. And uh, what we're going to do here is, is uh, move this uh, so that we can see a little better here. There we go. So that's the second router, router one, and the first router, router zero. Okay, now there's a second interface down on this side. So there's a port over this way between the two routers, and there's a port this way that connects to the LAN. That's the gateway address for the 192.168.9.1. That's where the gateway address comes from, or the router address. So the second interface here uh, provides that connectivity. And unlike the uh, switches and PCs and hubs that we did in the previous uh, solution, when you connect these, you'll see that routers are a little more stubborn. So if we connect our um, PC to the switch, you'll notice that those interfaces come right up automatically. Uh, that's not true of the router. So if I try to connect router 0 to router 1 with these first two interfaces, you'll notice that the green triangles stay down. And what we want to do is turn them up so that they stay up. And so one of the best ways to do that is to use the no shut command, which is short for no shutdown. So what we're going to do is uh, select our router zero and go to the CLI. And here you'll see that as soon as I connect to that interface, uh, the command line interface uh, gets us to that point. And what I'm going to do is click into this screen and type the no shut command. Uh, as soon as I do that, what you'll notice is that it's administratively forced to a state of being up and connected. Now that doesn't help us because the other side isn't up yet. So what I'd like to do is change this on the other side also, router one, 
go to the command line interface. Now we're on the, uh, the second router, and here's the same interface on this side, 0 slash 0. And I'm going to turn this one on with a no shut command. And uh, basically what I have now when I look is green and green. Now at some point we want to save the configuration we just changed. We'll show you the command to do that in a minute. But uh, we're going to make another connection between this interface and the first switch and we'll be faced with the same problem. So if we hit our connector object and connect from our router to the switch. You'll notice the interfaces are down. It's because the routers are stubborn. Unless you force them up, they won't, they won't come up. Let's do the same again on router 1. And uh, we're going to go back and do the same thing we were doing just a moment ago. In the router 1 interface, now that I've connected another uh, now that I've connected the second interface, we should see uh, something there for a gigabit Ethernet. But sometimes you have to change between the interfaces. So the config um, console that we're in, what we need to do is exit out of this. And then we need to specify the other interface. Interface, gigabit, Ethernet, 0 slash 1. That's what we want this time. And we're going to say no shut. And it says change state to up. And now over here you see the change almost immediately, right? So the switch says, oh, we've got something going on here. That's why it's in a state of flux. The router says, oh, I'm good here. And now we have the other interface connected. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side for router 1. We're going to change the interface. So we're going to exit out of e gig ethernet 0 slash 0 and we're going to change the interface int gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. That's the second physical interface on the second router. Now I'm in that interface. I'm going to say no shut for this one. No shutdown. Now it's up. So if I look now, I have, I have a connection between the two routers. And then here's the first leg of the 192.168.9 subnet and the 172.16.9 subnet on this side. I'm going to go ahead and complete my connections. I did, in the PC, already configure the gateway or 192.168.9.1 and the fast ethernet to be a dot 10. And that's why you see the dot 10 down here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect uh, these. Did the same thing on the other side. So if I click on here and then look at the config, you'll notice I set up the gateway for the second PC and on the fast ethernet port I used uh, client address of dot 10 but the uh, here's the network address 172.16.9 and so my PC is ready but uh, yeah so what we need to do is connect and see if the PC can ping this gateway and then we're going to attempt to ping that gateway from here same thing on this side we're going to ping this gateway and then we're going to try to ping that gateway over there and these two PCs are going to try to ping each other. And uh, what you'll find out as we connect them is something unusual. So we pull up the desktop and the command prompt. And here we are on the first PC, which is sitting on the 192168. And if I do IP config, it tells me that my address is there and there's the gateway. Now let's try to ping the gateway. Ping 192.168.9.1. And I can ping the gateway. Let's see if we can ping the other gateway. 
let's change this to 172.16.9.1. Uh-oh. Destination host is unreachable. It's because it's in a different network. And you can't you can't communicate to other networks unless you have routes and routers in between. So that's the PC0 side. Let's check the other side. The other PC, let's go to desktop, command prompt, we're going to ping. Well, let's make sure we have the IP, the IP address set up correctly. We do, it's on the 172.16. It should be able to talk to the gateway on 9.1. 172.16.9.1. So let's see if we can ping 172.16.9.1. And we can talk to the gateway locally. Can we talk to the other gateway? Can we get out on the internet? Let's see. Ping 192.168.9.1. Uh, nope. Oh, let's. What happens if I try to ping the other PC? The other PC is sitting on 192.168.9.10. You're wondering, how did I fast that, type that so fast? I used the up arrow key and then just added the zero. You'll see that I have the same problem trying to ping PC0 from PC1, the first PC from the second PC. I can't do it. But here's where the magic of routes come in. And it's a very simple thing to set up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up my first router. And uh, I will go ahead and exit out of the interface configuration. Now I'm just on the router configuration. And I'm going to type in IP route. Now this is on the first router. I want to create a route to this network. So this router wants to create a route so it knows how to get to 172.16.9 over here. So I'm going to create that route by saying IP route and I'm going to put 172 I'll identify the network here .9.0 got to put in the subnet mask only this time you have to do it dot a decimal style you can't use Cider notation, go figure. And um, then I'm going to put the IP address that the interface on this side uses to access this network. So if this router is passing traffic out to 172, it has to hit this interface first, which is 10.10.9.2. That's where we're going. So I'm going to put 10.10.9.2. So this command has uh, five parts. IP, the word route, the address of the network you want to get to, the subnet mask for the network you want to get to, and the interface you have to reach to get to it. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it took. So I'm going to exit out of here and I pressed enter a second time to get that, that prompt. I'm going to say show IP route. And it's this that I'm interested in right here. Now I have a static route, an unchanging route, like a statically assigned IP address for the 172.16.9 network on the first router. So now it knows how to route to that network. I'm going to save this by using the, R, the WR command. And that means that the changes that I've made, no shut, the configurations, the route, all that's going to be saved. I won't, ever have, to, I won't have to do it again. Now I have the other side to go. Because when you're pinging, there are packets that are sent from here over to there and back again. So we need a route from this side going back the other way. This router needs a route 
that tells it how to get over to the 192.168.9. So I'm going to open up the router1 config, the CLI, and do the same thing. Only this time, and remember, I'm going to have to get out of the interface level. So I'm going to exit out of interface configuration. Now I'm on router configuration. So the IF stands for interface. I'm on the router. It just says config. That's just router. And I'm going to say IP route. Um, let's see, where am I going? I'm going from the right side to the left side. I want to go to the 192.168. Dot nine dot zero and then two five five whoop two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero and then the IP interface where I want to go that's this interface here. So if I'm coming from the right side and I want to reach this network, I have to hit there. The 10.10.9.1 right there, dot one. So that's what I'm going to put for my route gateway. That's my destination. Dot nine. Dot one. And I'm going to hit enter. And it took without an error. I'm going to exit out of this. Hit enter again to get my prompt. Now I'm going to show IP route. Yes, and it's this static route that I'm interested in. Now the second router has a static route to show it where 192.168.9 is. I'm going to save this so I don't have to keep doing it every time I turn on the thing. That's a drag and a WR for write. And now we need to test our ping again. So we're going to go back to the first PC. And this time, I'm just going to hit the up arrow key because I don't want to have to keep doing this kind of thing. Right? So if I hit, if I click into the screen and I hit enter, if I hit my up arrow key, now I'm going to try to, let's try to ping our own, uh, well, we know we can ping our own gateway. Right. I'm going to use my up and down arrow key. Let's try to ping the other gateway for the other network from 192.168.10. Uh, 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 yeah. So it took a second. It had to find something. The packet got to the router, and then eventually it kicked in. So now let's see if I can ping... the other PC. So I'm sitting on 192.168.9.10. I want to ping 172.16.9.10. And voila. Let's try the other side. We're on PC1. I'm going to click into the window, hit enter. I'll hit my up arrow key. Let's try to ping our own gateway first. Yes, indeed. Hit my up arrow key. Let's try to ping the other gateway. Yes, the other gateway res responds to the second PC that's sitting on a 172 address. And now let's try to ping PC0, the first PC. 192.168.9.10. Drum roll, please. And whoo! Yeah, balloons fall from the ceiling, champagne flows. Ah, there we go. So, uh, what you have now is a completed static route, a basic static route on each of the two routers that instruct each of the routers where to go for the next hop. That's the important thing. A router decides if the traffic stays local or it's put out to the next hop. That's what we want to understand about this part of Module 3 and our material today. That concludes our YouTube. Um, always available for assistance for a walkthrough. You can walk, watch the uh, YouTube video for G GSN3 
use the same commands in the same setup to do the same thing. Um, let us know how we can help. Thank you much, and goodbye.